Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. On tap, we've got what should be a fairly intriguing matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Dallas Cowboys. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We are sandwiched between Fort Worth and Dallas, Texas in Arlington at the luxurious AT&T Stadium. Obviously, they do everything big here in Dallas, and the introduction to the Cowboys, no exception. They're set for football in Big D, as their guys will do battle with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hello again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon, joined as always by Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at this Cowboy team entering play. The losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jaguars, they too were losers last week, so they're also hoping to get back in the win column. Something's got to give in this one, right? Both teams want to start a new streak, and they both want it to be a victory. This should be a fun one. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. Leading the charge is the UCF product, who hails from right there in the Orlando area in Altamont Springs, Blake Bortles. I love just about everything about him. Love his game, love his makeup, love his moxie. One of my favorite words. This guy's a competitor. Gritty, tough, you name it, he's got it. But... He did throw an interception in last week's game. That contributed to a loss. And despite the fact he threw three touchdown passes, he's going to be out there redoubling his efforts and trying to play better. There's Leonard Fournette, 1,000-yard rusher from a year ago. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. And credit the tackle to Taco. Taco Charlton with a stop. And for this offensive unit that we'll see here in just a second, T.J. Yeldon is certainly someone to mention. Came out of Alabama with a lot of attention, but earned it. This guy is better and better at a lighter weight. Shifty back who can finish with power. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. On second down, here's Fournette. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said, write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was, because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it could be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. So a good run by Fournette. Now another first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Dante Moncrief that time. And that'll bring up second down. A look now at the starting 11 on defense for Dallas. It's quite a unit, number one in the NFL against the pass. And since this is such a good unit of covering passes downfield, I think that last play is typical of what we might see. A lot of short passes, see if they can generate some run after the catch, but nothing doing on that one. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Back to the air on second down, it's Bortles. This is Yeldon on the dump off. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Call it a one-yard gain on the play. And that'll bring up a third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play. But if you're on offense, be aware. A ball may come your way. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. Demarcus Lawrence in there to get him and that's sack number six for him on the year and charles part of the reason they lost last week they didn't have a single sack where they changed that quickly but did they ever and it was something they talked about with us extensively they needed to get pressure how were they going to get to the quarterback obviously they schemed themselves into a great play didn't they and the jaguars send out their punter back deep is Tavon austin 
This will be fielded at the 17. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. So here are the Cowboys now ready to go on offense for the first time. They'll be led out by their quarterback, a product of NC State. It's Jacoby Brissett. As far as insurance policies go, he's definitely not a bad guy to have around. He'd only played three career games when he's picked up from New England at the start of 2017, but he's a competitive player, and many around the league believe he's a true starter in the NFL. Hey, slow down, slow down. Let's go! One! Ah! Reset to throw on first. And he'll lay out and pull it in. What a diving catch there. I'd have to say that whenever you see a good post route run, they do not like to let it end without the catch. Hence, that great diving play. Yeah, lay it up there, let him go get it, and he got it. Here we go! Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Now, look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. And the offensive starters for Dallas. This offense begins and ends with Ezekiel Elliott. He played in only 10 games last year after leading the league in rushing as a rookie, but still led the league in rushing yards per game for the second year in a row. When he gets his hands on the football, everyone comes to the edge of their seat. They'll try and run for it with Elliott. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. A first down carry by Elliott. And down to the 36-yard line here. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and do some things up. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. And time to take a look at the Jaguar defense. I want to highlight Telvin Smith, only the third linebacker in Jacksonville Jaguar history to make a Pro Bowl. But not for that reason. When he came out of Florida State with his build, many were projecting him as a safety in the NFL, around 215 pounds. He's gotten a little bit bigger, but his ability to run and hit and make plays has made him one of the most valuable linebackers in the NFL. They made the right choice leaving him at that spot. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. Mm -hmm. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. And this is good. It was running out of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And the Cowboys are going to jump out to a 3-0 lead. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Yeah, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Bortles on the give to Fournette. And now running right through it. 
And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. It looks way too easy right now. Two carries, two straight first down runs. The eyes are carrying the legs to the proper hole, but they're being created by an offensive line that has the leverage game going for them right now. Lower than the defensive front, creating space, and he's finding it in a big way. Got to love what they're doing on offense right now. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside the former defensive back Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jaguar football as we begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. First down carry. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, and you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. A fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. He's going to loft one deep left. This is intercepted. Picked up by Anthony Brown. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down the score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. And now here come the Cowboys. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game on, are so good Five, and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Second down, Elliott. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Oh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Flush to his right. And he's able to get out to the 32. Brought down there. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. I like his effort there. He got it done on his own, but let's face it. He puts defenses in a really stressful spot when he takes off and runs because a lot of guys have coverage responsibilities. Good job of rallying, though, because I thought when he first took off, he might pick up the first down. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try to move the football. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Demarcus Lawrence in on the tackle. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Now Bortles. Safarian Jenkins has it. Bortles to the former Jets, Safarian Jenkins for the Jags first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. 
found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Carry now for Yeldon. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Tyrone Crawford in on the tackle. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. The sorry, coach. Sorry, we get slap happy up here sometimes. False start there. That will set the offense back five yards. Brandon, the lineman, certainly flinched there before the snap. A good start. call. Offense. So that'll back him up five. Still second down. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. 380. 380. Working from the gun. It's Borles. Incomplete over the middle. Safarian Jenkins. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Mortals looking to throw on third and two. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Couple of nice plays for Jacksonville, another first down there. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Again, they'll throw with Bortles. Caught, Safarian Jenkins, right side. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Bortles now on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Bortles will try again on second down. Now a leaping catch. He's got it. It's a gain of nine yards, and that'll bring up a third and one. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Bortles to throw once more. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Cole. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. If there was one area that the coach emphasized in our pregame meeting, it was red zone offense. In a sense, I got from it, and I think you did as well. They weren't real happy with how they were executing previously, so they put a lot of time and effort into it because getting points is paramount. doesn't matter what you do otherwise. Don't leave the red zone without putting points on the board.
And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over, and we'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now Bortles again. He goes underneath for Yeldon. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Again, it's Bortles. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Dante Moncrief, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jags are able to cash in for six. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Looking, looking forward. forward. Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. To review the play, the ruling on the field stands. It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. Point after by Lambeau, up and good. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Now the Cowboys' offense heads back onto the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. First and ten, Brissett. He sets to fire deep. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. D.J. Hayden right there on the coverage. Well, partner, they're not content to run this one out as we head towards the half, trying to hit a big chunk play right there and add to their score. Yeah, this is a confident group. At the very least, they're thinking field goal. Yeah, and I don't blame them go. one bit. I don't think you sit on the ball going into the half. When you have... And the Jags get to him as down he goes. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. The Cowboys on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and forever. To throw is Brissett. Trying to lay one up deep. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll kick. Now they're going to fake it from deep in their own territory. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 45. 
potential turning point as he'll get the football in very good field position late in this first half. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. This from 54 yards away. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Jaguars out on top as we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks. A few teams starting to rise to the top as it's time to take you around the NFL here in Week 6. We'll begin up north at MetLife Stadium over in New Jersey where you see the final score there. Carson Wentz, two touchdown passes as his guys remain unbeaten. From there, we're off to Tennessee to check on the Titans at home in Nashville. And they've got the lead in that one over the visiting Baltimore Ravens. The Titans looking to sew that one up, and they look to be in pretty good shape. Lastly, let's check in at our nation's capital, see what's happening with the Redskins at home at FedEx Field. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Carolina Panthers. Alex Smith, a strong performance there, over 300 yards passing with three touchdowns in the victory. In the game you've been watching, it was Blake Bortles with a strong first half throwing the football. His guys have the lead in Big D as we get you back to AT&T Stadium in Dallas and Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe on, works. A first down throw for Brissett. And he finds his target, Terrence Williams. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. The give is to Elliott. And he's able to get this one down to about the 40. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. They just get the playoff. Now Brissett. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. set now forced out to his left he may try and run for this so no sack he gets back to the line of scrimmage but it'll still bring up a fourth down well the defensive guys won't be real happy because there won't be a sack on this play because he did get back to the line of scrimmage but what a job they did overall hemmed him in and gave him nowhere to go with the football and I don't think this has the carry it does not it's no good and this score will stay right where it is 
So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. <laughs> and now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon, so apparently neither guy is immune. On first down, Bortles. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, Four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Now Leonard Fournette. Wow, evasive. Make a miss. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. That one, 28 yards on the ground. But he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. A handoff to Fournette, and this play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back to the 15. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And as we've seen throughout this season, it's no picnic trying to score touchdowns against this unit. They're ranked number one against the run. But it's also difficult because it's not easy to throw the ball against them either. On second down, here's Yeldon. He takes it to the 15. A flashy move, but little to show for it. Sean Lee, the pro bowler, there for the tackle. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. From the gun on third down, Bortles. And he takes a shot on the release, as this will be incomplete. Well, that was excellent coverage right there, and he definitely did the right thing, showing that discretion is definitely the better part of Valor. Threw it away, preserved the opportunity to kick for a field goal. And excellent coverage. And right now, the human is controlling the defense, so good job, human. And Lambo will put this one through. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you've pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. They'll try and get the running game going with Elliott. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. I actually love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed, and he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And that one not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Arlington. It's the Cowboys in possession of the football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. 
Out now comes the Cowboys punter. On, we think, to punt, though he's faked it earlier, but he was unsuccessful. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Call it a pickup of seven, and it'll be second down. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. Here's a give to Fournette. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during this. Rush coming, and he's taken down. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it, it's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is, because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. This is Fournette. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you... And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Jordan right near midfield at the 49-yard line. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you gotta be super careful. Gotta be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. And he's gonna take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Wide open receiver complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. Here's Brissett. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Let's go! On third down, Brissett. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Maybe a little frustration starting to creep in. The offensive line hasn't done a great job of protecting him in this game, and there he was, hit again as he threw it. Yeah, another time on his backside. Probably starting to get a little frustrated. Got to keep his composure. Can't let the defense know that they're getting to him. Escaping the pressure right. A hit as he throws, and this is going to be incomplete. Jason Garrett might be wanting to reconsider the decision to go for it there. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here of the turnover on downs. 
So the failure to convert no doubt really hurts, but this one's not over. A good chunk of time on the clock and the timeouts. Yeah, not only do they have the timeouts, as you just noted, they're going to get an extra one with the two-minute warning. And that's going to help them big way. So in a sense, they have four timeouts in their pocket. The big thing, stopping them on defense now. They can't let them get a first down and make them use their timeouts and get a fresh set of downs. They've got to stop them right here. And if so, they still got an opportunity. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they get it across the 40-yard line. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Portal's going to look to throw. Treads the tackle. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. They certainly thought they had him surrounded and probably thought they were going to get him on the ground and get the sack, but he's able to elude that. And even though it threw it incomplete downfield, if you're a defensive back, you're loving the pressure that you're seeing from your front. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. The Jaguars on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and ten. Bortles to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Demarcus Lawrence, he's the one to get him, and that's sack number seven for him on the year. Well, someone's closing in on the league lead in sacks. He came into the game in the top five. Now you add two more to his total. And now a timeout called by the Cowboys' defense. As he'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late-game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Here <laughs> They'll start the drive with Elliott. Oh, a nice spin. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. First down now, but that clock rolling. They'll look to throw. His throw incomplete. He was looking for Terrence Williams that time. And now it's second down. This defense so strong all afternoon long. Well executed again there. This is a group that really functions well off of each other. No matter what the assignment, the other person fills in in the exact proper spot. They've made it very, very hard for them to find open places to throw the football. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going.
The Cowboys on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. Here it's third and three. Come on, let's go. Again, it's Elliott. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. Got to be careful here. They need to move quickly, but it's also fourth. Running with Elliott. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Oh, man. Fourth down and one, and you're on your own side of midfield? That takes a little bit of courage to pull off, but they went ahead and snapped it, and it'll work out for them as they get the first down. Back to throw. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. He'll look to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. He's back to throw. And oh my goodness, what a catch at the six. That goes for a gain of 31. First down now, but the clock continues to move. And he clocks it with just 10 seconds left. of scrimmage once again the five as they get ready for second and goal back to throw and that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock defensively now one more play to stop what are they looking for you want to take away their number one running option that you scouted and take away their number one receiver and see if someone else can beat you Brissett Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Dante Fowler in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Well, no doubt an electrifying finish to have it down inside the 10-yard line. That final shot, though, they couldn't get it in the end zone, and that's all she wrote. And they had the final shot, the last snap taken, that close to the end zone. They don't get it in, so they'll regret that. But flip it over, making a stand in that portion of the field, congratulations to them. So for the Jags, their good start continues as they get their record up to 4-2. and two. And they'll head back home next week to take on the Houston Texans. Meanwhile, for Dallas... The loss here will move them back to 500 at 3-3. Three and, three. and they'll try to rebound next week on the road in Washington.